If you watched all my videos about the original cockpit build, you'll have seen me say on a number of occasions that nothing's ever straightforward. There's always a problem. <laughs> and so um, I've been problem solving and uh, continuing my experiments with this new addition to the cockpit. And uh, it's not easy, you know, if you think this is going to be a straightforward addition and you're going to try it yourself. You need to plan for a little bit of uncertainty, shall we say. What I've been doing since the last video instalment, the first thing I've done is I've moved the positions of the side screens to tilt them out. They're, they're tilted out, I think, currently by about probably 30 degrees. And the reason I've done that is nothing to do with the viewing angle of the LCD panels. That was sufficient. It was slightly faded with the angle of view but it was well within acceptable limits. But actually when I came to setting up the multiple views I find it difficult to or perhaps impossible to get the side views aligned acceptably with the forward view. And I found that tilting the panels out slightly, well, well more than slightly, allowed me to get a much better fit. Still something I'm experimenting with. I think the current angle is okay. I might go out as far as 45 degrees. In fact, if you think about this and if you experiment, it is actually increasing the field of view up to a point. It's only after I approach and perhaps exceed about 45 degrees that the field of view will start to diminish. So I'm actually optimizing things by tilting those screens out. The support structure wasn't designed for them to be tilted out. So currently they're suspended in a fairly haphazard and I guess precarious manner. I think it's pointless doing anything permanent until I really establish the final orientation of the screens that's, that I'm going to want. The other thing I've been working on is getting the proper side views displayed on the side monitors. And to do this I've purchased a copy of Opus FSI which you may be familiar with as a weather program. Opus is a weather program, but it's much more than that. In fact, it's a very sophisticated program, as far as I can tell so far. It's very complicated, and um, but what's encouraging is the complication, once you get your head around it, it all makes sense, and uh, it really looks like this is a mature product. It comes with a huge amount of documentation, there's, I can't remember exactly, but there's five or six at least different PDF files covering the various different areas of functionality. Um, and, and for example, the one that deals with the camera view function, which is the thing that allows you to set up and manage the views and you know bind the views to joystick buttons and so on, that's got a 72 page manual. I'm currently working my way through. I'm not going to say too much about Opus. I might show you a little bit of the view set up in a while. One of the things that's very reassuring about it is if you follow all the instructions for setting up, first of all, the single PC system to establish the basic functionality, and then moving on to the network setup, pretty much everything works first time. So anyway, all that said, we do have Opus FSI running now. We do have a basic setup with two side views, and uh, it is kind of working. I say kind of. There's an awful lot more work still to do on this. Um, you know, this is where your motivation can flag. Really, there's so many different problems to solve. What this setup basically does is it runs a new program on the server which is the main FSX PC and it's the main F, uh, the main Opus FSI program. Now this needs to be licensed so I have bought a license for this. You can, it does work in uh, demo mode um, with a few restrictions. The main restriction is it only works for 15 minutes then it stops then you have to restart the program and it won't actually work for two minutes after you restart it. In practice that's 15 minutes is nowhere near enough to really get your teeth into this. So I got so sick of that I just bought the license 
pretty much right away. And then on each of the client PCs, uh, and to date I only have one client PC which is at the moment running both my side views, that's the right and left view, but on each client PC you run the Opus FSI client program. Now this doesn't need to be licensed, you can run as many copies of that as you want on as many client PCs as you want. You only need to license the program on the server. And I have to say that uh, a lot of other vendors could learn from that licensing model, Orbix. But I have that set up and we are running successfully, but there's a lot of tweaking that uh, needs to be done. The problem is once you run that extra program on the PC, on the server PC, it potentially, and in my case, you know, actually upsets the balance of the scheduling and so, so on that goes goes on with inside FSX and the various add-ons so my performance suffers and you know I'm getting things like blurred ground textures and so on so that a lot of fiddling's got to go on there the other fiddling has to go on is um, getting the balance between the well again this is multi-dimensional you know first of all I haven't established the basic the baseline performance capability of the client PC to run two views. It will do it and it will sort of do it and limp along with some stuttering. We'll have a look at this in a minute. But you know I've really done very little to optimise that other than to cap the frame rate. I think it's capped at 30 frames per second at the moment. So what can be done there? First of all I could do some tweaking of the video card setup. I have this ATI video card on the client PC which I haven't done anything to you know that will allow me to optimise, I'm currently running without anti-aliasing so it will allow me to optimise anti-aliasing hopefully without too much of a hit on the FSX program itself. What else? I can likely overclock that PC which ought to give me a significant performance increase but the other dimension is the network communication. The Opus FSI program uses a high performance network architecture to communicate basically position, orientation and weather information from the server to the client. But there's some um, different parameters you can play with to optimize that. Currently I've got it set completely default and it may be that um, that's more network traffic and more I don't know time slicing than is required at each end of that link. So let's start things up and take a look at some of that. So here we are, I'm just going to try and demonstrate setting up the views very quickly. To the front we've got the main FSX PC with the wide three screen display. We're just looking at the left hand side of it at the moment and we can also see the Opus software main control panel visible. We can also see the left screen of the client PC. Now what you should notice is that's currently displaying a view from the cockpit of the trike. But we're using the trike at the moment to set up the views on the client PC. So we're looking at the main Opus application page. These green stripes mean that we're communicating between the client and the server. If I open the camera's view all the camera setup is done on the server, which is, which is very handy. We only need one keyboard and mouse to hand. So we're looking at the server aircraft at the moment, FSX server. And I've got two views set up. One is a virtual cockpit view for, for, from the Twin Otter. Another is a 2D view for the Twin Otter, which is essentially just an out of the window view. That's the one I've been using out of preference. But we're just going to have a quick look at setting up the client view. If I look at the client views instead of the server one, if I go to select computer system, I can look at my client system. My client is called Amy. And here I've got two views set up. That first one's not named very well. That's the left view and the bottom one is the right view. We're not seeing the view on the left hand screen at the moment. But if I double click on that to edit it, a couple of things happen. 
One is the view changes to the view I have set up and we get another dialogue up. This is the camera edit dialogue. So you should be able to see here as we're looking at the corner view where the left view matches up with the front view. And um, all I'm going to do here is just going to very briefly show you rotate that view until it matches up or we can pan it up and down and so on. Now I'm just going to cancel out that because I don't want to save those edits. Now if we go back in and we can set the zoom as well and we can do all sorts of other interesting things. So those views are now live. If I go into slew mode on the FSX PC and uh, if I just move the aircraft so I'm rotating it to the left you should see for example the Orcas Island sign there it should disappear off the front and come in off the left view. Now just a couple of things uh, in fact if I just do a couple more of experiments with that if you look at the cars so the red car is going to go off and it should come onto the view at the left the blue car and the white truck and the buildings. Now one thing you will notice if you've got a keen eye is if you look at that red car as it comes onto the screen here it's actually kind of elongated and it doesn't look quite the same proportions. Same with the sign. If you look at the Orcas Island sign that's almost a square on that view and as it comes across it's much more rectangular. Now this could have been, I could have predicted this, but it was something of a surprise. What's happening here is, don't forget we've got this single window display for the front view and as you're probably aware you do get stretching towards the margins of that window. The zoom is set so that the stretching isn't too noticeable under normal operations. But in this kind of situation it's hard not to notice it because the view is basically spanning from the extreme edge of that wide view to an undistor relatively undistorted view at the side. The other thing that's going to affect is the sensation of speed. I'll point this out when we're looking at the live demo in a while. So there we go and using SLU again I can just uh, move us around and you, you should see that um, that view kind of matches up. I should say as well it only really matches up from one position which is roughly the position that my head is in when I'm flying in this virtual cockpit. So if you move off, off axis or over to one side or up or down that join doesn't look right which is probably what you're seeing from the camera angles shown here. So this is just a default air strip although it's in the Orbix Pacific Northwest region and we've got snow on the ground again this view is taken from it's, it's a bit of an odd view and of course my head's in the way of most of the important stuff here but um, the important thing to notice is the view isn't going to line up quite the same way as it will do from the pilot's seat so bear, bear that in mind but also again I haven't spent a lot of time refining this view so it's fairly rough and ready, but it does line up pretty well. You're going to notice right away some glitching, even though this is relatively low impact scenery. You're going to see the side views are kind of stuttering. And again, that's because I haven't really spent any time optimising this view. But it looks pretty good here for a first attempt. Now the other thing you're going to notice is the colour matching between the front view and the side views isn't perfect, well it's, it's far from perfect. Again I've done very little to try and correct this. I think what I'm realising is my forward view is actually quite uh, warm or yellowish in a way I hadn't really noticed. So I'll get around ultimately to tweaking those as well. Now what you're going to notice here is particularly when we get into a situation where the view on the front screen is moving quite rapidly from left to right or right to left. Now that's when we're doing a turn like this or when we're flying 
low to the ground and the speed becomes more apparent. You'll notice that over at the join, that's at the left hand side or the right hand side, you get an obvious discrepancy in the movement. Now we have another anomaly here, and that is if you look at the water, that doesn't match up either. And that's because we've got default water in the views on the right and left there, and in the central view we've got a Rex water texture, which is obviously very different. So again, ultimately, I've got Rex on the client PC. I haven't installed any textures yet. We'll work on that when we get around to looking at the weather. But for now, the textures for the water don't match up. Well, we went long there, and we got reverse thrust. So this is just a look at a more interesting airport. This is Orcas Island from Orbix. This is obviously more of a performance hit. And so at the moment, it's pretty much unflyable, I, I would say, with the default setup. And I'm going to have to do some serious tweaking before we can use scenery like this. But we've got a wider range of buildings and ground markings and scenery here and you should get a you know a sense of even though the performance is not up to it how well this multi-screen setup could work again don't forget we're, we're sitting off axis here we're, we're sitting far back from where the pilot's viewpoint is so some of this matching doesn't look quite as refined as it does from the pilot's seat. Again we're getting this effect where something goes off the edge of the main screen and onto the edge of the small screen. We get strange anomalies in the speed of movement and also the perspective. As it leaves the edge of the main forward screen we see an object kind of slow down but also contract, compress it looks like, due to the change in perspective. And likewise if an object moving off one of the side screens and onto the main screen it will appear to speed up and stretch as it crosses that boundary. That's something that uh, we can't really get rid of unless we were to go from a single windowed multi-screen forward view to using an individual view for each of those three screens. 
And again, realistically, the only way we can do that is to use a separate PC for each screen. Again, just coming off the ground at Orcas here, we can see that the water textures don't match up. And again, that's just because we're using default water textures on the iron PC. And we've got a Rex texture on the server PC. But you should see that the ground by and large matches up. I think we might actually have different seasons set by mistake here. So, although the ground textures almost match up. There's something about the colour and maybe the foliage doesn't quite match either. But there you go, a lot of work still to do. This is still very much a work in progress but I think as a proof of concept it's fairly convincing. 